Uh, now let me introduce the speaker. Uh, Meda Simanavichute is live fish and vegan challenge campaigns coordinator at Tushti Narvai, based in Lithuania. Meda has learned the meeting companies and introducing herself is the very first step we could all take if we want to get more victories for animals in the long term, even if it's something you want to reach for fish welfare, which is more neglected farmed animals than others. Let's talk why in a talk called Are we ready to, to talk fish? Succeeding uh, fish welfare changes in Lithuania. So welcome, Meda. Uh, thank you, Monica, for introducing. And uh, first of all, I just, yeah, I'd like to tell you that I'm a bit nervous as I'm not the English native speaker. And that's a bit stressful for me to, to give you this speech, but uh, I feel like you may help me on this as well. And I'd like you to, uh, well, to, to ask you a favor. Uh, which I saw my colleague like a uh, couple of weeks did with uh, when he was doing the webinar and I feel that it's very, very helpful uh, while we are doing that online. So uh, thank you for those who is already with their cameras on, but uh, if anyone else uh, well is ready and uh, is able to turn uh, their cameras on, please do that. And first of all, may you just simply smile to me and wave to say hello, that I would feel like we are all together here, okay? <laughs> Thanks, that's really sweet, that, that really helps. Uh, okay, so maybe we'll uh, just move on to the uh, presentation. Uh, let me just turn, uh, turn on the screen sharing and uh, let me know if you can see my screen now. Just like, yeah, okay, great. So as uh, Monica introduced, today I will talk about uh, fish, uh, fish welfare campaign, but more like uh, in the way that, uh, how we can go, uh, go with the like positive outreach and how we can help fish as well as the other animals. First of all, I'd like to introduce myself. Uh, as Monica said, I'm uh, working at Tushtanarve. I'm based in Lithuania. Tushtanarve, if you're not familiar with the uh, organization, we're part of Anima International. Maybe you're more familiar with this organization. And uh, at Tushtanarve, uh, I work mostly with two different campaigns. It's Vegan Challenge and uh, fish, Live Fish. Uh, campaign. Uh, what I will talk with you today is uh, I'd like to inform you like what was the results of the campaign we did here in Lithuania. Also what helped us to reach the successes in the campaign and uh, also I will mention how we were supported by the public because as uh, Monica introduced, is I feel like uh, fish are neglected animals and we are always like a bit afraid of talking about them because we don't know how the public will react. And uh, lastly, I will tell you three stories about different relationships with different supermarkets, which I was working with. So, uh, what it means to fight for live fish. Uh, sorry if some images may seem to be a bit uh, too graphic for you. I just want to show you uh, what it is, that, well, what the campaign is about. Because uh, I remember that uh, my colleague who was working on this campaign before me, he said that uh, once uh, he started the campaign at Ushtunarve for live fish, he was trying to reach out to different kind of activists from different countries and simply to find out uh, how, uh, what is the situation in different countries for uh, live fish welfare. And we know that it's not very popular uh, tradition. It is more like, uh, it is popular mostly in Eastern European countries. And uh, he was just trying to find out whether there are any kinds of legislations or, or like, yeah, laws which uh, forbids to sell live fish uh, in different kind of countries. And it, it seemed like 
some of the activists didn't even know what is this practice or what are the legislations for that because it is just the there is no uh, retail of live fish in their in their countries they don't know anything about that but the situation in Lithuania is like this you can go to the supermarkets to the stores or to the markets and you can simply buy a fish which will be put in the plastic bag with no water at all and you can bring that to your home and kill it yourself and this is what we uh, as an organization as an organization we are trying to stop but the extra vims before i started but the extra vims is the name of the uh, campaign and uh, it is uh, translated to help fish and before i started what we as an organization did uh, on 2017 we did an investigation uh, uh, in these stores which are selling uh, live fish and we published uh, two two years in a row we published the investigations along with the petition uh, which was directed to the uh, supermarkets which were still selling live fish and uh, I can't really tell you what why the uh, decision was so, but we didn't try to contact the supermarkets directly. What we just did was uh, had that petition, which was addressed to the supermarkets, and we were like publicly shaming them for still having that practice uh, at their stores. When I started, I, I started a uh, in the end of last year, uh, December, uh, well, yeah, I, I started to coordinate the campaign firstly as a volunteer. So uh, I started to coordinate it on uh, last year, uh, November of last year. And uh, first of all, uh, I think that like the key point which helped me to uh, go further with this uh, campaign was that I, uh, I, try to get in contact with the veterinary uh, service, the institution in Lithuania. And uh, let me just get clear that we are not, we were not in a very good uh, relationship with this institution. I hear from, uh, from activists from other countries that it's nearly impossible to, uh, well, yeah, to go and ask for something from their, uh, local veterinary service institution because they don't care for the animals. And I feel like it is uh, the same in Lithuania. I feel like they do not care uh, for the animals the way we do as an activist, but I don't think that it's only all the time like black and white. And uh, I knew that on 2006, there was a legislation which was released by veterinary service which forbids to sell live fish to the customer that meant that uh, the fish has to be killed uh, before it is sold and uh, unfortunately that uh, legislation was only valid for one night because of the pressure from uh, stores and fish farmers but uh, it was like, you know, a, a will from the veterinary service to do something for fish. And we came back to them and said, like, look, we know that you uh, tried to do that. And like uh, 13 years ago, in, it didn't work. But this time you will uh, have our support and would like to do that together with you. Uh, we agreed to uh, prepare the project for them. And it is still... Uh, it is still being processed with all you know the, that uh, bureaucracy thing uh, with the uh, governmental institution but uh, institutions but i really believe that uh, like in few months uh, we will have that uh, legislation uh, approved and what else we did we uh, had collaborated with them during the christmas period uh, just before, uh, it was very nice that veterinary service uh, 
organized the meeting with all the supermarkets and the association of retailers of Lithuania uh, at their office. And you can see the pictures on the right from that meeting. Uh, we went to the meeting and we informed uh, the retailers that we are preparing that project and at some point they will have to kill the fish before uh, they sell it to the customers. And also, they, uh, we informed that, that during the Christmas period, we will do the investigations again. And this time, uh, immediately after we send the complaint to the veterinary service, they will go to check the store, even though it will be a weekend when normally they don't work. Uh, also, what we have done uh, was that we made some media publi uh, publica publications during the Christmas period about why buying live fish is inhumane. And uh, what we did uh, differently this time uh, during, the in the, during the investigations, uh, we were not only taking pictures of uh, like uh, violations with injured or uh, like overfull uh, tanks, aquariums. We were also talking to the employees of the stores who were working uh, with those live fish. And we heard a lot of interesting and sad stories. They were telling us that it's so hard to uh, work uh, like this, that conditions, work conditions are pretty bad because they are like wet all the time. Uh, because they have to fish the fishes and uh, they say that it's very hard to kill the animal for them uh, if anyone asks to do that and uh, some of the employees said that they like feel their uh, blood pressure is getting high every time they have to do that and that's like yeah you can you can understand that because it's you know, who would like to kill the animal? Of course, it's, it's not a job, perhaps not the, how to say, dream job uh, anyone uh, would like to have. And also what we uh, did differently this time, we were not publishing the investigations. That means that we were not, there was no public shaming for the supermarkets. And instead of that, we, were, uh, we contacted them and uh, invited them to meet and said like uh, it was after the christmas we were tr uh, i was uh, starting to contact them and say like look we did the investigation i'd like to share the results with you and talk about the plans for the future for uh, live fish uh, aquariums uh, at your stores uh, at the end of Last year, the situation in Lithuania was that three out of five biggest supermarkets were still selling uh, live fish. Also, uh, there are live fish uh, at the markets, but we were mostly focusing uh, to work with supermarkets. Therefore, uh, therefore yeah, I, I will be more talking about them on this presentation. And the situation right now is that one supermarket out of three doesn't sell live fish anymore. One supermarket ditched the aquariums in most of the shops and won't sell uh, live fish from 2021. And the last one uh, won't sell live fish from 2021, even though they still have uh, lots of aquariums uh, at their stores right now. Uh, yeah, so I think that I will, I'd like to start with uh, Ike, like it is the best example, I believe, and if you're not familiar with Ike, with the name Ike, maybe you will be more uh, familiar with the uh, name Reve group. Uh, Ike is the part of that group. And, uh, you can see the picture here where I'm standing in front of empty uh, aquariums at their stores uh, in the mid of uh, May. 
So with IKEA was like uh, we didn't have any history of campaigning uh, of campaigns before. Uh, when we did, uh, when we started campaigning for cage free in Lithuania, uh, IKEA Reve Group was uh, has already been committed to cage uh, to yeah to to become cage free, and we asked them. Uh, we asked IKEA to have a, a public statement in Lithuanian as well, but they just simply ignored us. And we didn't really uh, care much because we knew that they will have to uh, ditch the cage, uh, caged eggs anyways. So there was, I would say that our relationships were pretty neutral. And uh, we, uh, once I contact them in the beginning of the year, uh, me and my colleagues uh, went to meet them at their office. And I would say that they were like super welcoming, very nice and friendly. Uh, the member of the board came to the meeting as well. And uh, we informed that, that like, yeah, we'd like to tell you about what we have found in your stores during the investigation. They were, uh, it seemed like they were very interested in what we have to say. And when we started to say what kind of violations in how many stores we found and what we have talked with, uh, with their employees, uh, the member of the board stopped us on, uh, almost immediately. And we were, they were starting to say like, we cannot listen to that. It's, it's just like very, uh, sad and we just want to find a solution how what we can do uh, to stop this it was very nice and uh, I would say promising and uh, yeah so we agreed that in a couple of months uh, that we we should uh, contact them after two months because uh, in that time they will try to find the solutions and they will look for the alternatives, what they can do uh, to get rid of those uh, aquariums. A week after, uh, the other supermarket announced that they are starting to uh, decreasing the number of aquariums at their stores publicly. And I believe that IKEA wanted to, uh, how to say, to go live with the a stronger message. Uh, therefore, they said they committed to uh, ditch the aquariums from their stores uh, till the end of this year. Uh, that was very surprising and nice, and it didn't take like such long for them to decide them. And therefore, I called uh, Indra, the contact person I, I, I was contacting. Uh, I said to her that, well, I congratulate you for, for this uh, step. I'm so happy for you. And if you need any help, uh, just let me know. And uh, yeah, so uh, after, uh, after a few months, uh, the Easter was coming. And maybe a week before Easter, I was starting to worry how is it going to be this year? Because normally in Lithuania, like the, uh, uh, the most active period for selling live fish is during the Christmas. But uh, it is also quite popular to buy live fish during the Easter period as well. Not, not so popular as on Easter, but anyways. But this time it was a quarantine and I was afraid like, uh, I, I, I thought like we know that uh, during the quarantine uh, people won't move uh, move to their relatives so much and perhaps they won't buy so uh, so many food and uh, how uh, how does the uh, supermarket how do the supermarkets react to that uh, therefore I was wondering maybe I can just simply call uh, to the contact person of IKEA and ask her whether she knows anything if they are planning to uh, buy more fish during this period or or what well basically what's uh, what's the plan for them when I called to her she said to me like uh, you know I think that we won't buy more and I think that we won't buy any more at all uh, that was a bit surprising 
And uh, I said like, really? So why haven't you told me that? We should go with this message. We should go live and we, we should like spread the word that you are getting rid of the aquariums. Uh, we agreed to get in contact when, uh, when she has more information about that. And yeah, so in just a couple of weeks, uh, in the beginning or in the midst of uh, May, uh, I was standing in front of these, uh, uh, these aquariums, so like super happy because uh, Ike, uh, yeah, they announced that there won't be any more live fish uh, on, on their, at their stores. Uh, we tried to spread the message uh, as much as possible as an organization, we tried to help them. And uh, it was funny that uh, Inge, after I sent her the results of our, uh, of our uh, post on Facebook, which was like very high engagement, uh, I said like, look, uh, I see that you were like praised a lot on, uh, from our, of our followers. And maybe you will be so kind to share the results from your side as well when you went live with that message. Uh, I have to mention that on our social media in the comment section, uh, we put the link to the, uh, to the IKEA post on Facebook. And it was also like with high engagement, I could see that they have so many likes, much more than previous uh, posts they, they, there was on their, uh, on their Facebook wall. And there were like very, uh, there were a lot of comments praising them, congratulating and saying like, thank you for, for, this, uh, uh, for this action. Uh, and Indra told me that uh, her colleagues asked her whether it was her from like uh, writing those comments from their fake accounts. Uh, because there were like so many of them and they were not used to that uh, like nice and and uh, nice words and so many likes etc uh, it was it was very funny but I think the most beautiful thing which happened was that I also shared the uh, the news on on my uh, Facebook wall and I tagged Indre and said like thank you for uh, thank you for yeah, participating in this. Thank you for arranging the meeting, etc. And I'd like to co quote what she wrote me back. Uh, she said, like, that's the way I always ima imagined business and activists working together. I was happy to participate. Thank you. Uh, that made me, like, really happy because it seemed like the person wanted to uh, to work with us and that was really very encouraging i'd like to move on with other example which i called like the worst example uh, it was rime supermarket uh, retailer rime which maybe you are more familiar with eka group which is a part of eka group why i say it's the worst example because we had a com campaign uh, against Trimé uh, on 2017. They were the first ones who uh, we were campaigning against uh, for cage free. Uh, the campaign lasted for four months. We were doing protests in front of their sh of their store. We we had the uh, web page for them and all the you know other stuff which is done on uh, uh, during the campaigns uh, when yeah they committed uh, but it seemed like they didn't really like us after after that campaign and we could really feel that when we started to reach out to them uh, about a uh, live fish uh, about live fish so yeah uh, Rimé was very cold and the meetings with them were like very inconvenient, uh, inconvenient I would say. And uh, uh, even when I, they were also uh, committed, they also committed after uh, Ike did that, that they are ditching the aquariums till the end of this year. And even when I 
tried to congratulate them about that. They were like very cold and it was a bit unpleasant. Uh, also, they ignored me for several times when I was reaching out to them to say, maybe you would like to, maybe you'd like any help for, uh, from me to spread the message that you are uh, ditching those aquariums. They, they were just very ignorant. And I, I'm very helpful, uh, I'm very thankful to Rime that like now, a few weeks ago, me and my colleague went to meet them and they were very honest uh, to us. They said like, because we went and tried to do that a bit in a different way. And we said like, okay, we came to introduce ourselves this time. And they said like, okay, you should have done like that for about like three years ago or something. And they said like, we don't trust you anymore. And it's very difficult to work with you and to build up that trust and see you as a partners because of the history we have. And I think that, yeah, it's legit feelings uh, which they feel uh, about us. Uh, the last example is Maxima. Uh, firstly, I'd like to tell you that before we wanted to, uh, before the Maxima, before Maxima announced that they are ditching the aquariums, we had the donation matching campaign in Lithuania, which we decided to, uh, to dedicate for fish. And I think that it helped me to uh, realize that people care for fish and uh, that perhaps answers uh, the question whether we are ready to, to talk about fish. Uh, because we were a bit afraid how people will react and whether they are going to donate. And uh, we asked for uh, 15 euros, which is pretty a, a big amount in Lithuania to donate. And every 15 euros would be matched by, by the philanthrop. And, uh, it was a great success. We reached the goal in uh, about one and a half week and we could see that, yeah, people do care about fish and they are willing to, uh, to donate uh, to, to this campaign. Uh, Maxima, so about Maxima, uh, they are the biggest retailers in Lithuania. And uh, on that, donation matching campaign, we were a bit like publicly shaming them because they were the last retailer uh, who didn't, which didn't uh, commit it to uh, go, ch go aquarium free. But from the beginning, so uh, they, uh, once the first time we met them, was the day when they announced uh, they are decreasing the number of aquariums in, at their store. So that was super weird that uh, we had the meeting at 2 p.m. if I remember well, and at 10 a.m. we saw a news release saying that Maxima is, the message was very misleading because uh, the title said Maxima is uh, getting rid of the aquariums. And, but if you read the, uh, if we read the article, we could see that they are just decreasing the number at uh, six stores. And uh, we did that just before the meeting. We went to the meeting, we said like, okay, that's, that's such a great thing. You are starting to think about that. But uh, we, we weren't, were not so well uh, prepared for the meeting and uh, it was a bit hard because they said, we are already doing something and we don't have plans for the future yet. Let us just start doing the things we, which, you know, to, which we already started doing. And uh, after that meeting, I tried to contact them for half a year, uh, asking them to meet again, ask them to uh, get me in contact with the decision makers, but they were like very ignorant. Of course, it was the quarantine at the same time as well. It was a bit hard there, but anyways, they were like, like super ignorant. And uh, after that, I was just uh, trying to reach out to the member of the board of Maxima and ask them to, uh, and ask her to meet us and talk uh, about live fish. When I called 
her and I introduced myself. Like I'm Meda, I'm from Tushta Norway. I heard her sigh. It was like, okay, Tushta Norway. And it wasn't a good sign, I would say, because, uh, you know, she didn't seem to be too happy about my call. Uh, we agreed to have a conference call a week after. And the day before uh, we had our call, uh, there was a news release saying that Maxima is going aquarium spree after 2020. Uh, again, I don't know why they did that. Uh, why they did that just before our meeting, we were not prepared well again, but uh, it was a cold and unpleasant call again. Uh, but I'm very happy that my colleague Thomas participated uh, in that meeting and he will have to contact them later to, uh, well, for Cage Free campaign. Therefore, he knew that he, have to have, uh, he has to have that uh, nice uh, relationships with them. So it, it is better to, how to say, to warm up a bit and to, to get to know each other better. And I'm so happy that in the end, at the end of that call, we even somehow Thomas made, <laughs> made the member of the board smile to us. And it was like, like the beginning, I would say, to the better relationships. So uh, why the methods were so different before and now? It's hard to say. And, uh, you know, one of my, uh, one of uh, the activists I know once told me that we should go with the methods uh, we are using until it still works. And I have to disagree with that because I feel like we, we may have, may, we may be in that trap of being a badass activist. And if we are always like uh, campaigning and using the, um, how to say, using the power of the activist, that if everyone from the business sector would see us as a powerful, because we are capable of doing bad things for them, is it really the best uh, relationship we have? Because I believe that if you see another person as well in the power, you may at some point uh, get angry on him or even a bit like you you would hate him for doing things you do to uh, to their business therefore i i would say that it is always better to try to build up a partnership to build up a trust uh, between each other rather than hate and it is always better to uh, try to get in contact, in a nice contact with the organizations, with the businesses, uh, rather to, as to, to be those like badass activists. Uh, and why I say that is that I feel like uh, I, I just, maybe I just want to wish uh, every one of us to be seen as a professionals more than as in activists because when you go and you uh, know what you are doing when you know very well what is the animal welfare issues and you ask the businesses uh, to help to improve that it is much better than you come as an activist as that angry person who wants the changes like right now and like very big changes so I, I would say that partnership is always more, it is always better than hate because then you can be seen as a, a professional instead of the being seen as an activist. So that's it. Uh, you can see my contacts here if you'd like to contact me and to talk more about this, uh, about this topic. And if you have any questions now, I would love to answer those. That's a funny fish uh, picture there. <laughs> Thank you for your presentation. 
Uh, we have some question on Slido. Okay, okay uh, I start with the first one. Have surveys uh, been have been been done on how customers are slaughtering fish in the home, please? Uh, yeah, uh, there was uh, there were no surveys made, but uh, as far as we know from the well traditions, uh, why people buy fish is that they want to have that like very fresh uh, on the Christmas day. So sometimes they buy the fish and uh, let the fish in their uh, bath tube and let the fish swim for several uh, several days and they kill it uh, on the day of Christmas and the methods are very different I, I I don't really know much of them but like like an example I know that uh, some people they are just putting it uh, to the freezer uh, that fish would think that it's winter coming and it fell uh, asleep and then it wouldn't move when it's being killed. Some of the people, they just try, you know, to cut it and uh, uh, kill it that way. Some, I don't know, I don't really know why, but I've heard that they put uh, salt in their throat because it also falls asleep somehow. So yeah, the methods are uh, different. Mm. It's so sad. Um, there is any question? Uh, what would you change about this campaign if you were to run it again? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, uh, I don't think that the uh, the possibilities would be like there would be more possibilities when uh, then we did that, but. I think that maybe I would go differently direction with Maxima especially because with others, I mean with Rime, we didn't have the uh, like to, the possibility to change it somehow at the, uh, at, the, at that period. Uh, maybe I would have tried uh, to introduce those first uh, instead of like just going and seeing the results, but also to like to provide the wider understanding. What is this uh, movement, animal welfare movement? What is it about? Uh, the same with Maxima. Uh, but I think that the, the, why, the question is more like what we can do in the future. I see that we are warming up and getting more trust from Reme right, right now. And that may help for the future campaigns like cage-free, broilers, uh, whatever, if we are in a good relationship. So I think that it is always good to start, uh, well, trying to build that trust and, and good relationships if possible, as soon as possible. Yeah. Uh, there is another one from Haven also. Are there other countries where you think very similar campaigns could be successfully run? Uh, it depends if we talk about uh, if we talk about fish or live fish I don't think that it's very common uh, in other countries to have uh, live fish uh, cells uh, but I think that from this you can learn uh, something for other uh, campaigns as well like as cage free campaigns my advice would be just before you go to the uh, uh, to the business or well to, to the companies and instead of demanding something you perhaps should start with the introduction and uh, telling like what are you and what is this movement of animal welfare uh, what is it about and that would be you know a, a great start to my opinion mm. Mm. Uh, another question, have service, uh, uh -huh. this is uh, also the, we have it. Uh, from Sarah Buck, uh, two small questions. Are fish regarded as sentient under Ultian law? The first one. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I I would say I would I don't know if there is any like uh, I I can't really tell you that, but I know that uh, there is some laws uh, in uh, Lithuania in regards of like growing fish or selling it, but I don't think that there is like a uh, anything said that it is uh, sentient. I I don't know if I I think it's just seem to be as a common sense on the law. Mm -hmm. uh, the other question is, do fish species require stunning before slaughter, at least for commercial sale? Uh, yeah, well, in Lithuania, if you, like, for example, at the stores, I think that's the problem, you know, that if consumer, if the customer uh, buy, buys the fish and brings it to his home we don't know how he kill uh, how he kills the fish because if he requires to, if he asks uh, the uh, worker the employee of the store to kill the fish it has to be it is uh, yeah required to stun the fish uh, the fish before uh, before slaughtering it so we see that exactly as a problem that uh, mm -hmm. If a person buys it, we don't know how it is killed. Yeah, it's, it's not not good. <laughs> okay, another one. Uh, had there been any cooperation with organization in Poland running the same campaigns? Uh, we didn't. Uh, how to say we uh, before we uh, before I started uh, like taking any actions. Uh, on this campaign, uh, we had a call with a person from one of the um, one of the organizations in Poland, and yeah, we asked for help, we asked for advice, and what they have done already. But we're, they were not like how to say collaborate uh, collaboration or uh, speaking to to the uh, retailers together because. There were not well simply no uh, retailers in both countries which we would be selling live fish at their stores yeah but we uh, it's it's good that we had the and, and well we had some examples from uh, poland at the time when i started because we could take it as as an example when we went to the uh, retailers in lithuania and we said like look uh, poland is already uh, ditching the aquariums as well. It's just, you know, this practice will be a uh, history very soon. Another question from Tomas. Uh, what do you think are the next steps for improving fish lives in Lithuania? Uh, yeah, so, you know, this campaign, I don't think that it's uh, already over because uh, we are still, uh, there, it is still possible to go to the markets and most of the time uh, it is even worse uh, conditions for fish, uh, live fish at the markets because uh, fish farmers just simply go to the market and sell the fish from like empty boxes without any water, without any filters, uh, etc. So uh, what we are going to focus on as an orga organization now or on this campaign is that we will try to stop, uh, yeah, stop the practice also on the mm, markets level. Mm -hmm. yeah. And do you think a similar campaign for crabs or lobsters could work? Yeah, I get this question quite often, and uh, I can't, I can't really tell you that because. Uh, I think it's a bit more difficult, but uh, perhaps you can never know if you uh, if you don't try. Yeah, that's that's my opinion. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer, Jennifer, I have uh, another question. Are there instances where the fish already die before they reach the person's home? For example, because of a lack of oxygen in the transport bag? Uh, I believe so, even though I know that uh, the most popular fish uh, which is sold live is uh, carbs. And uh, I know that they can, 
uh, stay without any oxygen oxygen for like very long time and uh, i'm afraid that some of the people they buy the fish and just let it die like this without any oxygen and uh, yeah so i can't tell you there's no statistics or something but i i truly believe that there are lots of cases like this uh, how did you decide to target your campaign against the live sales live sale or of fish <laughs> I don't really know if I get this question right, but it's, if, if that's what, what I understand is, uh, I think that it is the, um, how to say, the, the problem with live fish is that they are not only uh, suffering when they are growing uh, and the far, at the farms, but also when they are transported uh, to the stores and also being in those small aquariums, like so many of them, uh, they are injured there and I would rather see fish uh, killed immediately without any, how to say, without uh, being hurt even more. Uh, be, yeah, being hurt even more. So that's why we decided to work on this issue in Lithuania. Okay, we have two minutes. Uh, so mm -hmm. another one question, I think. How did you decide to target? Uh, okay, we have this. Uh, had it there been any cooperation with organization in Poland? Yeah, running we, I, the same I, I already. I, I yeah, yeah, yeah. We have this twice there. Uh, do you know? Uh, to clarify, was the victory that stores still keep the live fish but kill them before selling, or is is it that uh, there are now no live fish in stores? Uh, no, they, we, we, yeah, we're working on that legislation too, because we think that it would help for markets to, to, yeah, to, uh, it would, uh, how to say it would be a bit harder for markets, uh, well, for, uh, fish to be sold on markets, but as supermarkets, they agreed, they committed to ditch the aquariums entirely. There won't be any live fish uh, at their stores anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so the last one, I think. Do you know on average how many hours or days a fish spends in those tanks? I can't tell you. I know that during the Christmas period, it's like very fast that it's changing. Sometimes it's uh, like they bring fishes twice per uh, per day because it well customers buy it so quickly. But if it's like summertime and the product is not so popular, then it's it may stay for like several days or even more than a week or two Good. okay thank you Maria. It's, it was very very interesting and i hope it will be better soon for fish also so, um, yeah. so have a good day and uh, at the care conference maybe also and thank you thank you very much for your work thanks, thanks everyone for participating here and for coming bye